Greetings family. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, I'm Advocate Puleng. Today is the 28th of October. Therefore, we will continue with our marathon and we will look at Proverbs chapter 28. The main emphasis in this chapter 28 it's about those who are in authority, how they govern, and it's also about us as citizens obeying the law or not obeying the law, and what will be the results thereof. If you look at verse 3, I'm not going to be looking at all the verses in this chapter, but please do read the entire chapter. There's a lot of benefits for each and every word of God. You know, God does not waste words. Even a single word, if interpreted correctly, if the correct meaning is attached to it, it's very important. So in verse 13, it says, Someone in authority who oppresses the poor, it's like a driving rain that destroys the crop. Have you ever seen that there are people in authority who do not know how to use the authority and the power that they have. You, you see, because for me, authority goes in hand with power. You cannot have authority and do not have the necessary power to exercise because of lack of that power or lack of a mandate can render one useless. Now, some people, when they are in that position of authority, they misuse it, they ill-treat their subordinate, they ill-treat the poor. The poor here are always a target. And God always has something to say about the poor in protection, in defense of the poor. Because Jesus Christ said, we will always have the poor among us. The poor is a vulnerable group. But how do we treat them? If we ill treat them, if we do not treat them well, the Bible shows us that God takes an exception. Now, when you look at verse 12, it says, When good people come to power, everybody celebrates. But when bad people rule, people stay in hiding. The same sentiment in verse 12 is expressed again in verse 28 which reads as follows. People stay in hiding when the wicked come to power. But when they fall from power, the righteous will rule again. You know, there's a say that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You see governments who have a two-thirds majority Despite the fact that they are strong opposition party, they can do whatever they want to do to oppress people, to do corruption, nepotism, maladministration. They can do all those things because they rely on the numbers, because those that two-thirds majority gives them absolute power 
and absolute power corrupts and it corrupts absolutely. But fact of the matter is those people, the wicked when they come to power, they will fall. They will fall from power, mark my words, and the righteous will rule again. The righteous will take over. And this is my prayer today. May all those governments that are oppressing their people, may all those wicked governments that are in power, may they fall so that they may be replaced by righteous governments. You know, the Bible says in Daniel, it is God who installs kings, but also it is God who dethrones them. May God install righteous leaders and may he dethrone the wicked powers of our generation. When you look at verse 15, it says poor people are hopeless against a wicked ruler. He is as dangerous as a growling lion or a prowling bear. Let me show you something about the struggles or some of the struggles of poor people. You see, we all know that the Bible says money answers all things. You know, if you have the money, if you are financially independent, you are truly emancipated. That is why the struggle that we have in our country, South Africa, is the struggle of economic emancipation. Um, we did acquire political freedom, but it's not yet Uhuru because we are still not economically free. People are struggling. And this is not, this is just my view. I'm not necessarily expressing a view of a certain political party. I'm just talking about my political, my personal view that yes, we are politically free in South Africa and ours, our democracy is the most advanced. It's true democracy in action. We have freedom of expression. We can say whatever we want to say, even to the powers that be fearlessly. But the thing is the people are poor. There are so many unemployed people in South Africa. And when people are poor, they are helpless against wicked rulers. We know when you are poor, when you are not financially independent, when you are not economically independent, you end up going to a job that you don't like just because you need the money. You know, the situation renders you hopeless. The situation renders you helpless. You continue to go to that abusive environment regardless of the abuse because you are poor, because you need to put bread on the table. Now, let's move on. It says, if you have no regard for the law, now it's talking to citizens. We've just talked about wicked rulers. We've talked about those who are in authority, those who are in position of power. Now, let's look at the citizens. If you have no regard for the law as a citizen, you are on the side of the wicked. But if you obey the law, you are against them. You are against to you are against the wicked. How are you on the side of the wicked? Let me give you an example. 
The Bible says if you don't respect the law, for example, somebody will come selling things, a television, I'll give you this one for 2000 How much does this television cost? It costs maybe 6000 It's just an example. And you say, okay, I will buy it. Why do you have to buy that television? Because unless if there is evidence, this is a stolen property. So in other words, you are supporting the wicked. You are on their side because you are breaking the law by buying stolen goods, by buying stolen property. In our country, it is an offense. So clearly, you are on the side of the wicked if you disregard the law. But if you obey the law, you are against them. Because you must just say to them, no, I don't buy stolen goods. I only buy from the shops. If I want it cheaper, I will wait until such a time there is a sale. Because you know what? You don't want to have everything in your house that you bought fairly and you have this one item that you bought as a stolen property. That is the accursed thing. It's a cursed thing. And that accursed thing, that only one accursed thing will open a door for the enemy, will open a door for curses in your household. Now, it says in verse 6, it is better to be poor and honest than rich and dishonest. Because in most instances, those things that they are selling to you, they were not even in your plan. They were not even in your budget. I'll rather not watch TV. I'll rather not have every other thing, but survive on the minimum that I have. Because in most instances, it's not even like you need it. It's just because it's been offered to you cheap, but it's a stolen property. So the Bible says it is better to be poor and honest than being rich and dishonest. Continues to say, a young man who obeys the law is intelligent. One who makes friends with good for nothings is a disgrace to his father. Now, young people, let me give an example of a driving and exceeding the speed limit. You know, as a young person, when you drive and exceed the speed limit, because young people are very energetic and they can drive with speed. And in most instances, when that happens, they are breaking the law. But as a young person, if you don't, if you obey the law, the Bible says you are intelligent. You know, recently, a very young man passed on. And some of the young people who knew him said, hey, he was involved in a car accident. It was even in the local newspaper. But we didn't know that it's him. It's only a few days later where we know that it, we got to know that it is so and so. And the young people that knew him said, yo, that one he liked to drive without putting on a safety belt. You see, you are breaking the law as a young person. Not only that, drinking and driving, you are breaking the law as a young man. And so on and so forth. There are so many examples that I can make of the young people involving in themselves in the breaking of the law. Drugs. Using drugs. Selling drugs. In some of the people, they target these young people, especially those that come from well-off family. They, they 
initiate them into these drugs. They teach them how to do these drugs. And because they know that once they are hooked, they will come running for the drug themselves. Apparently, that's the strategy that they use. They initiate them. They give them for free. But they know that as soon as now they are addicted, they will come for themselves. They will be stealing the parents' money and so on and so forth. And this all starts with bad company, bad friends, good for nothings that the Bible calls them good for nothings. Friends who are good for nothings. There is a disgrace to their father. Because those good for nothing friends, when you live with them, when you relate with them, when you make them friends, they will begin to mislead you. They will begin to make you feel like you are stupid. You know that is why usually when I talk, I talk to young people, I say to them, make friends that share the same values as you. And I'm using the word same values cautiously. Because I could say, if you go to church, make friends with people who go to church. But you know what? There are some wolves in sheepskins in the church. So it's not everybody who goes to church who is God-fearing. Some, they come for different agendas just to entertain themselves. They just come to entertain themselves. They don't come because they have a relationship with God. Some are still young in the Lord. They're still coming with their baggage. So what I'm trying to say, the, the, the church is not a place full of all perfect people. It, it's a journey for all of us. And some of us are still, some of them, they are still coming from the street raw, raw with their behaviors, with their habits. So if you are strong, you are not strong enough, you may be derailed. So it must be people who share the same values as you. If you are a girl, you have told yourself, I'll not sleep with a man before I get married. Don't go around with friends that, you know, are doing things that are opposite to the word of God. Because they will make you feel that you are stupid. You know, especially if you are a young person. A young person, all of them, they want to be seen as cool. They don't want anybody to think that they are stupid. So that is why it is important that you make friends with those young people like you who share the same values of, with you so that you don't have to explain yourself. If you live, if you make friends with people who share the same values as you, you will not have to explain yourself. And verse 9 says, if you do not obey the law, God will find your prayers too hateful to hear. This is very harsh. I want us to look at it with another vision. You know, this verse 9 says, if you do not obey the law, God will find your prayers too hateful to hear. Imagine, God is finding your prayers too hateful to hear. Let's read it with another version. It says, one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. So if you don't obey the law, your prayer is regarded as an abomination. In another version, your prayers are too hateful to God. You see, that is why it is so important that we obey the law. You know, when you, when you look at this book, it is an emphasis to the fact that God is concerned about every area of our lives. 
and that God ha has a say on every area of our lives. Imagine if you do not obey the law. I don't know what law it is that you are not obeying. Maybe you are not paying taxes. You know, recently I got an a SMS from the tax man which threatened me that I've committed a criminal offense because I did not pay taxes. This is for a company that I registered many years ago, which I only registered and left it there. It was never active, not even for one day. I don't know where they got these details from, but then I got this letter. And then I responded on an SMS, but I was also prepared to go to the the receiver of Renew Office to go and explain myself, to say, listen, I just registered this company. This company never works. There's no, you can go and check. I even thought that, you know, it's deregistered automatically. But then the following day, guess what? It was in the newspapers. And again, I received another SMS which said, no, we want to apologize. It was a mistake, even through print media. I don't know whether they did it on TV. I didn't see it. They also said, no, there are a lot of people who receive SMSs threatening them from the receiver of our um, revenue. We apologize for that. And I was so relieved because, you see, for me, I always want to be on the side of the law. Besides, as a lawyer myself, it can be crippling to my career if I do not obey the law. I, I buy my car desk, I pay my TV license, I do everything the right way because I have to lead by an example because I'm a lawyer, but also I'm a Christian. I want to be a good citizen. So I don't know where it where is it that you have slipped you may be thinking that ah it's a small thing it's not a small thing no matter how little or how small it is that which you have been doing go and correct because you know what, I, when i got that sms i i was like i spent a sleepless night and it's illustration to the last verse that I'm going to read because it says, honest people will lead a full, happy life. But if you are in a hurry to get rich, you are going to be punished. You want to lead a full, happy life? Be honest. Live with the little that you have. Don't compete with your with the Joneses. Be grateful for what you have. Because you know what? God is faithful. God will never leave you and he will never forsake you. God is your shepherd and therefore you will not want David says, I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging for bread. God will not forsake you and your seed will not beg for bread. Continue with what you have. But also what you need to know is that God is pleased with the prosperity of his people. He wants his people to prosper. And prosperity is yours. All Abraham's blessings are yours. You are blessed coming in and you are blessed going out. It is God who gives us the strength to make, to get wealth. May you be strengthened in whatever you do so that you may acquire that wealth in Jesus' name.